University of Alabama. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Stephanie Plum with the University of Alabama. How do you hear me? Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the uh, International Space Station. I have you loud and clear. Great. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you today. I'm just going to dive into the first question. Was becoming an astronaut your goal when you enrolled at the University of Alabama? Yeah, that's a good question. I, uh, I actually, uh, you know, I always dreamed of being an astronaut, but it was just that it was a dream. And my career goals had uh, more to do with uh, aviation uh, and being an Air Force pilot and a test pilot. And so my goals when I enrolled in, uh, you know, in the aerospace engineering program there at Alabama was uh, to further my chances of becoming a test pilot. Uh, and certainly that is a building block along the way to uh, eventually becoming an astronaut. But uh, it was beyond my wildest dreams. Uh, <laughs> even today, it's beyond my wildest dreams that I get to do something like this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my, my goal at the time was to become a test pilot. And so getting that engineering degree and that education from Alabama was, uh, you know, a, a key point in that, uh, that path. So eventually you did become an astronaut. How did the University of Alabama play a role in you eventually becoming an astronaut or influence your journey to reach the International Space Station? Well, certainly, you know, furthering your education and continuing to learn is is a super important part and a skill set that that all astronauts up uh, up here possess. Uh, but, you know, there's some of the intangible things that you gain along the way as well. And, you know, those are working uh, as a team. Uh, any academic endeavor really takes some level of uh, grit and determination and perseverance to get through it. Uh, and, you, you know, those qualities kind of really enabled, I think, a lot of the uh, a lot of the things that paved that path for me to be able to uh, to at least have a chance at becoming an astronaut. Uh, there's also a degree of luck and timing involved uh, in all of that. But certainly, uh, it has given me opportunities that I never would have dreamed possible. And the, the fact that I'm standing here today is certainly a testament to some of the, those opportunities that University of Alabama has offered to me. As the flight engineer on the International Space Station, are you able to use what you learned through the University of Alabama as part of your mission on the space station? A absolutely. Certainly the, you know, the, the perseverance and things like that when things go wrong uh, is certainly a part of that. But uh, one of the other things that we that I gained out of my education is a, uh, an, a, a creative approach to problem solving and, you know, working with all of my wonderful teammates up here. Uh, that is certainly something that we have to do when, you know, when we're either uh, fixing things that have broken or some of these science experiments up here and working on them and trying to get them to work uh, uh, the way they're, they're designed to, uh, those creative approaches to problem solving are certainly a, uh, a, an important skill set for us to have. And so absolutely, uh, you know, that experience at University of Alabama has, has been put to good use up here, that's for sure. All right. Now, not everyone who dreams of becoming an astronaut will become an astronaut. You got to reach your dream. But what is your advice to people who are thinking about pursuing graduate degrees to further their careers? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think having a passion for learning is is really important and, and continuing to do that and exercise your mind and learning things and staying current and relevant is, is super, super important. Um, for folks that want to become astronauts or aspire to do uh, do some other things that are uh, you know, having a far-reaching goal like that is, is super important. Uh, but I also encourage them to pursue something that they're passionate about. Don't do it to fill a square because you think it's going to get you to something uh, later just because it's filling a square. Um, for me, it was becoming a pilot. That was something I was passionate about for as long as I can possibly remember. Uh, and that was always uh, what I was pursuing. And, and it, it so happened that that led that put me on a path where this opportunity was available. And so I think, you know, regardless of where you actually end up and whether you achieve those super high goals that, that you set for yourself, it's important that you are content and satisfied uh, along the way where you can still be happy. And so finding something that you're passionate about is, is uh, a really important uh, part of that. What made you choose your particular graduate program and how did it work for your situation? Well, as I as I mentioned, I was a pilot in the Air Force, and I really wanted to go to test pilot school was one of my my big goals. And uh, getting a master's degree was a way to uh, further that, and really uh, what I felt would make me uh, the best test pilot that I could be uh, if and when I got there. And so that was kind of my goal when I enrolled uh, in the aerospace engineering program there at uh, Alabama. 
and it it certainly paid off for me. You know, the the experiences that I had, the uh, the research that I got to take part in, and the uh, the friends that I made, the professors that I had, all of them, you know, helped develop me as a person, uh, both professionally and personally. And to eventually come out uh, on the other side, I think, you know, I, I had the the opportunity to become a test pilot and and really, really enjoyed that. And all of that, you know, was we're just building blocks along the way for, uh, you know, to to get me here to where I am today. And I'm uh, I'm really grateful for my experience there. All right. When was that moment in your career when you realized you could become an astronaut? This was not just a dream. It could be reality. Yeah, that's a good question, because like like I said earlier, it was always a dream. It was something that I loved. I always looked up to astronauts, but it didn't necessarily feel attainable because it was just so far out there. Uh, And I was, uh, I think, in the Air Force for maybe six or seven years at that point. I was still trying to apply to test pilot school. And I read Rick Husband's biography, and he was the commander of the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia. And when I uh, read his biography, there are a lot of similarities uh, to the path that I had taken in, um, you know, and the, the pursuits that I, uh, I, have, I have gone on. And so when I saw those similarities, I just realized then that I think that was the first time that astronauts became real to me and that they were just, you know, real people that were passionate about what they did and, and you know, threw their hat in the ring and were able to, uh, to get selected. And so that was where it really became a tangible thing for me. Uh, and you know the future applications. Then I started throwing my name in the in the hat, and eventually in 2017 was uh, was fortunate enough to get selected. All right, well, you've said before that the first thing you wanted to do when you make it made it to space was look out the window. What were your thoughts or your impression that first time you got to look out the window in space? Uh, I think it was just wow. I think I just said wow over and over again uh, as we looked out the window. The uh, the very first chance was while we were still in our SpaceX Dragon uh, capsule, and it was right after, well, a little while after uh, engine uh, cutoff, and we had separated from the second stage, and we got out of the seat, and I went over to the window. It was the first place I went, and I looked out, and the second stage was right there, not too far away from us, just floating just below us. And it was so surreal to look down on the Earth, uh, which looks so natural from, from that vantage point, and then see this man-made object flying alongside of you uh, that you know just it, it helped you get to space. Uh, and so seeing that was such a surreal experience. And then looking off into the, uh, you know, that was looking straight down and then looking off to the horizon and seeing the thin blue atmosphere and the, uh, the stark contrast of the life of Earth with the darkness of space was just absolutely incredible. Uh, and then getting up here to the space station and being able to look out the cupola where you see that in a 360 degree field of view is, is just amazing and it never gets old. Bob, thank you so much for speaking with us today with the University of Alabama and thank you to NASA for making this possible and Roll Tide. Absolutely, it was my pleasure and it was, uh, it was great talking with you, Roll Tide. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the University of Alabama portion of the event.